This is Stacy Lovedall, and you're watching the Lovedall Science Channel. Today we're learning about rocks and the processes of the rock cycle. How do you like my picture? Do you get it? Rock cycle. Very punny, huh? Okay, well anyways. The objectives of this video are to help you identify the three main types of rock, the processes in the rock cycle that change rock to another type of rock, and to help you understand how rocks transform into other types of rocks. The rock cycle was developed to show the relationship between the different types of rock and the processes that form them. These are natural processes that are at work constantly, but they occur really slowly, so we can't notice them during normal time, but over the long course of geologic time you can see these changes. So let's look at it up close and personal. Here's sedimentary rock, igneous rock, and metamorphic rock. So the rock cycle, a diagram of the rock cycle, shows you your three main types of rock. And then it shows you some of the processes. And this is a little simplified for middle school, but it's still accurate. Sedimentation and erosion, crystallization, melting, and tectonic burial and metamorphism are all processes that transform rock into different kinds of rock. This is still the rock cycles, just showing where things are happening. We'll start down here with igneous rock. Igneous rock is formed from the crystallization of magma, and magma is just melted rock, so it's melting deep within the earth. As it rises, it cools and forms igneous rock. When that igneous rock gets to the surface, it can be weathered, eroded and transported and deposited as sediment, and when that sediment is buried and compacted over a long period of time, it forms sedimentary rock. If that sedimentary rock is carried deep within the earth, then deformation and metamorphism occur under very high heat and pressure. And when that metamorphic rock is uplifted, we can see it here at the surface. If it continues to be carried down into the deep within the earth, then it remelts, forms magma, and starts the cycle all over again. There are three types of rock that you guys need to know about. Igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. And there are lots of really cool diagrams of the different types of rocks and minerals on Earth. Take a second to look at your notes. Are they neat? Are you putting space between your concepts? Make sure you're taking your notes in Cornell Note format, which means that the topic or the main idea goes on the left side and the details go on the right. And notice, I am not squishing my notes all onto one sheet of paper. Good notes take space. So igneous rock is one of the types of rock that we need to know about. It's formed from the cooling and hardening of molten magma. The type of magma and how fast it cools change the type of rocks that we see. So for example, this is obsidian or volcanic glass. And you can't see any crystals formed in that volcanic glass or that obsidian rock. That's because it cooled very, very fast. On the other hand, this is a picture of another igneous rock, and you can see the crystals in this one, so it cooled much more slowly and gave time for those crystals to form. There are over 700 different kinds of igneous rocks. Quartz, amethyst, ruby, semi-precious and precious gemstones because they're so beautiful. These are igneous rocks and they can form very large crystals as long as they're cooled very, very slowly. The next kind of rock that we need to know about is sedimentary rock. Sedimentary rock is formed by compaction and cementing of sediment. And sediment is just tiny, broken up little pieces of rock. Gravel, sand, silt, and clay are all examples of sediment. And sediment is formed by weathering and erosion of existing rock. Here are two really good examples of sedimentary rock. This is a sandstone, and this is a limestone. Now, let's do a note check. Remember, note-taking is a skill. The more you practice, the better you're going to get at it. Include enough detail in your notes so that you can remember. The purpose of your notes is to learn the material. The next type of rock that we need to know about is metamorphic rock. Metamorphic rock is formed from existing sedimentary or igneous rocks that are subjected to high heat and pressure. When an existing sedimentary or igneous rock is carried back down into the earth, the amount of heat and pressure that that rock subjected to can actually transform the rock into a new type of rock. These rocks are not sedimentary and they're no longer igneous, so we call them metamorphic. In this case, the metamorphic rock has actually changed the structure of the rock 
where you can see that the crystals have become aligned almost in layers. The original rock wasn't that way. For more information on how to identify specific rocks, go to this YouTube video. There are several processes at work on Earth that can turn one type of rock into another type of rock. The key processes are melting, crystallization, weathering, erosion and sedimentation, and metamorphism. Melting. Under very high heat and pressure, rock will melt into a liquid. Liquid rock below the surface of the earth is called magma, and liquid rock above the surface of the earth is lava. Check your notes. Remember, lists are helpful. Crystallization is the formation of a geometric, symmetrical, homogeneous solid. Crystallization is really cool. Some of our favorite rocks are crystals. Homogeneous just means that the rock or the crystal is the same throughout. Symmetrical, we can have radial or bilateral symmetry just like in math class. Crystallization depends on the type of magma and different crystals form at different temperatures and it depends on the speed or how fast the magma cools. If magma cools slowly, then large crystals can form. If magma cools quickly, then very small or no crystals can form. Here's a picture of olivine. It's a really pretty green rock over here. And here's another picture of, crystal, of, of a quartz crystal. The next process we need to know about is weathering. Weathering is the process by which rock is broken down into small pieces. Rain, running water, ice and wind are all agents or things that can cause weathering. So in this picture we see a lot of examples of where these mountains are getting rounded and weathered by wind and rain and washing all of that down into this um, river plain. Erosion is the process by which soil and rock are relocated on Earth's surface. And again, this is a great picture showing how all of this weathered material is being eroded and washed down by the river and then deposited down here at the base of the mountains. Running water, ice, gravity, wind are all agents of erosion. Here's another note check. Good notes contain everything you need to remember. Lists and examples are really important parts of your notes. Sedimentation is the process by which rocks, soil, and shells and other materials are deposited back onto Earth's surface. Particles of sediment can be deposited by wind or by water. Look at all of that. Metamorphism is the last process we need to know about. It's the process by which heat and pressure change the structure so how it looks and the composition, the types of minerals that it contains in a sedimentary or an igneous rock. Heat and pressure are the agents of metamorphism. In summary, review your notes to make sure that you can identify the three main types of rock. Make sure you can identify the processes in the rock cycle that change rock from one type to another and be able to explain how rock can transform into other types of rock. There was a lot of vocabulary in this video, but remember, you don't have to rewrite the vocabulary words if you already have the definitions in your notes. Just review and make sure that they're already there. If they're not there, then go back and add them. Don't forget your three R's. Review your notes. Write a reflection for every page of your notes. I had four pages of notes. That means I'm going to do four reflections. And then respond to these questions. How do igneous rocks form, and what processes change igneous rocks into sedimentary rocks? Check your notes. Remember, good notes take up space. As Grandma says, penny wise, pound foolish. Put your response at the bottom of the last page of your notes. If you don't have room, then go to the next page. And now you know about rocks and the rock cycle. Thanks for watching.